Well, folks, I am, I'm not sure if I'm here seeking advice or if I'm here giving a, a, a bit of history or if I'm here making an announcement. I'm not sure exactly what this will end up being, but we're in the process of trying to figure out what we want to call ourselves when we grow up. Because right now we have so many platforms under so many different names that I'm trying to figure out should we change them. Anytime you build a brand, you, you don't want to have multiple brands. You, you want to have them all under one umbrella and it's way easier to market, the identity, the association, the, the feeling the audience and customer has with you will be much stronger if you have one brand. So. We started out this operation, fall of 2008. Uh, I, Matthew and I and some friends, we'd been filming each other in 2005, six and seven. I thought, oh, I'm gonna do a DVD series. series. Yeah, right? Uh, it got completely rejected down at the SHOT Show. So summer of 2008, spring of 2008, I sold all my cameras, sold everything, got rid of it all um, and uh, I had kind of said, I'm done, tried it, not going to work. And then a friend of mine uh, owned a production company that I didn't know he owned a production company. He knew, he found out what I'd been up to and he's like, no, don't quit. Uh, I think I can help you with this. So he talks me into it. He's like, look, if anyone can do this self-guided public land thing, it's you. And I'm the production company. If if you agree to be the host and spend all the time, uh, I'll front the, for the cost of the first three or four trips and you see if you like it. And if you do, we'll sign a contract. <clears throat> okay. So fall of 2008, I happen to have some really great tags. He sends his, his folks out, they film it, they turn it around and edit it really quick. And I'm like, whoa, <laughs> those guys are really good. So in like late September, early October, I sign a really big contract for them to produce an entire season. So the way outdoor TV works is you, you either bring in your own production crew or you hire a production crew. And then you have to pay the network to air your show. And depending on how many commercial slots you want, what time slots you want, uh, that determines how much you pay, but it's really expensive. So uh, he's helping me line up sponsors and we're like, all right, well, we'll get all the paperwork taken care of uh, later, you know, once Randy gets off the road, blah, blah, blah. Well, any of you who had money in the stock market and I think it was October 5th, 2008, you know what happened. So I was about 10 days, two weeks formally into this operation when it went south. <laughs> and we were in the process of filming the first year of On Your Own Adventures. Uh, that was our first TV show, or the name of the show. And man, you talk about a bad time to start. So that's how On Your Own Adventures started. And we were on the Outdoor Channel uh, for two years. So you film in 2008, the first year starts airing in 2009, 2010. Uh, the show is doing really good. And uh, I'm asking for better time slots because I know how well we're doing relative to other shows and the network would not give them to me. And so I moved over to Sportsman's Channel. Uh, and so in 2011, that, that year of the stuff that was filmed in 2010 goes to Sportsman's Channel. We run there for two years. In 2012, the network and it comes to me and says, hey, you know, we think your show would do even better if it had your name in it. So I'm like, nah, this isn't about me. This is about uh, an activity, about a way of how we do things. And I'm the, you know, I'm the tin horn kind of greenhorn at this point. I'm, I'm seeking advice and pretty much all the marketing people are like, no, Television and media is about personalities, so you should put your, your name in the title of the show. And I didn't want to do it, 
against my gut, but I, I kind of got talked into it, but I'll take responsibility for it. I mean, I'm the one who signed off on the final idea. Uh, but that's when it went from On Your Own Adventures to Fresh Tracks with Randy Newbert. Um, and it's same show, same premise, same everything else. It just had a different name. Um, so that's how we end up with two shows. Some of you still say, I remember when it was On Your Own Adventures, what happened? Well, that's, that's what happened. Uh, someone asked me if I have any regrets in how I've operated this business. I would say my one mistake I've made has been being talked into changing the name from On Your Own Adventures to Fresh Tracks. Not that there's anything wrong with the Fresh Tracks name, uh, but I know, I just, I, I wouldn't have done it if I, if I had to do it all over again. So that's kind of how the TV platforms have evolved. And then we left the network in 2017 was our last year on the network. And we migrated our TV version, our really high end stuff from television to Amazon Prime. So out on Amazon Prime, you see Leupold's Fresh Tracks with Randy Newberg. And that legacy name is, continues today. Then in 2009, while I'm doing all this, uh, my buddy Oscar had a website, a hunting forum called Hunt Talk. And I was a regular out there and he got ready to sell it. He said, I'm either shutting it down or I'm selling it. And uh, Oscar, I love you, man. But I, I don't know if I should have bought this from you. So I buy the Hunt Talk forum from Oscar. To this day, the Hunt Talk Forum, if you go to hunttalk.com, still exists. It's probably the gathering place for hunting policy and politics. Um, so we have that brand. And then uh, we, you know, along comes Facebook, and I've never been a big Facebooker, but I end up with a personal Facebook page. I end up with a Facebook page for On Your Own Adventures and one for Fresh Tracks. And those are, have kind of since disappeared. And we now have a Facebook page called Randy Newberg Hunter. And I'll try to explain how the Randy Newberg Hunter brand came to be. That came to be in 2015. Matthew and I are planning a transition from a digital or a, a traditional TV model to a digital model. And he's getting his MBA in Chapel Hill yeah, he went in 2015. And as part of his whole MBA thing, he's helping me with this transition from traditional TV to all digital platforms. Uh, and one of the things that you figure out, digital is all about search. So everything you read, all the experts are like, whatever brand you have, make sure it's really searchable. So. I go out to, uh, if you go to Google Trends, you can see what search terms are being used the most. So I go out there and I type in Randy Newberg. Anything Randy Newberg this or Randy Newberg that, it's always Hunter, Hunter, Hunter. So our YouTube channel, we launch in early 2016, January 1, 2016, we launched the YouTube channel and I'm like, well, Everybody says it's all about search. And the number one search term for me is, or for our platforms is Randy Newberg and Hunter. Those are the two terms that are there. So that's what the YouTube channel became, Randy Newberg Hunter. So the same thing applied for Instagram and Facebook. It's like, well, that's still the most searched term. That's what my Facebook and Instagram pages are called also is Randy Newberg Hunter. So I got that name that has three platforms. Then in the summer of 2015, the good folks at Meat Eater and 0.0, .0 get a hold of me. They just started their Meat Eater podcast a while before that, and it's doing great. And Dan Doty and Giannis Patelis are like, Randy, you know so much of this politics stuff, you need to start a podcast. Yeah, I got enough going on. So I owe them so much thanks because they produced, they helped me start the Hunt Talk Radio podcast. So now in 2015, 
I got a podcast to go with the Hunt Talk Forum. So I got the Hunt Talk podcast, the Hunt Talk Forum. And then in 2018, I talked Corey Jacobson into doing the Elk Talk podcast with me. At least there's a little consistency there, right? Hunt Talk, Elk Talk. Oh, and also the crew two years ago decides they're gonna start their own Instagram page called Fresh Tracks TV. As if we needed one more kind of moon orbiting our planet here. So here's where I'm at. I'm trying to figure out how do you take this many brands and bring them into one umbrella? Uh, we've got big plans of things we want to do to continue our why. And that why is to promote self-guided public land hunting and create advocates for that cause. And creating advocates for that cause requires platforms, requires new people, new ideas, new content. So as we have this whiteboard that's just full of new ideas and new platforms, time has come we got to figure out all right what are we doing with this i don't know what it'll be but i've set a goal that by the end of 2021 we have to solve this so that's what me and the crew and some trusted advisors are working on so if ever you you do hear that or you see something different It'll be the end result of what I'm discussing and what I'm trying to do here. But uh, anyhow, I thought I'd share that with you. The crew thought, you know, that probably wouldn't be a bad idea to share with the audience. So if we do end up changing anything, which we're not sure if we will, but likely we will, uh, they're not caught off guard and maybe somebody's got some good ideas or some of you watching are experts in this sort of stuff. And uh, you'll give us some, some guidance of what path to follow, but I can tell you this, if it wasn't for all of you, I wouldn't have this dilemma because it's all of you who watch, listen, engage, participate. That's the reason why we're here. So thanks for all your support. And uh, hopefully as we travel forward, uh, we'll be able to provide more of what you enjoy, what you find relevant and useful. Thanks for watching.